Today we're going to show you how to do a hybrid fabric box system. You can use an existing system or just use it as a standalone automated system. Okay, everything we need in this right here, all the tools, everything. See, Bob really has the coolest looking greenhouse. I love this one, how he did the end. Very cool. Can't even tell it's a greenhouse. No. Love it. Absolutely love it. We have some half inch tubing, quarter inch tubing, fabric bags, or should I say fabric grow bags. Master blend, water pump, timer, and T adapters. We're going to take this tote, 27 gallon tote, one of our favorite things, and put it underneath the float bed. So in his float bed, I'm going to go ahead and leave it all hooked up in case we want to switch it back again. So put this under, so this corner. We'll drill a new hole here for the bulkhead fitting to drain down into the sump, which is where we'll put our nutrient solution. Reverse the direction of your drill and the liner won't rip up on you and you get a nice cut. If you do it the regular way, it can pull the liner. So do it reverse till you get the liner. Wait. Okay. Forward and we'll drill the hole for the bulkhead fitting. Now we're going to want to clean out around the edge really well because the bulkhead fitting with its washer is going to fit right down into there and that'll be our drain for the bed. Holes drilled, cleaned around the edges. Make sure your washer is good and tight up in there. Slide this down and we'll put this nut on the bottom and tighten it down. So when you're tightening this down, don't over tighten it. It will flatten out the washer and you'll end up with a leak. I mean, good hand tight, maybe just a little bit, a quarter more but over tightening will definitely flatten out the washer. Now we're just using the existing system and the water, just cleaning out the bed a little bit before we put all the fabric pots in with the perlite. Good. Now we have the whole bed cleaned out and rinsed. Uh, we're gonna start filling up the fabric pots with perlite and setting them in how we want them. So we have two sizes of the fabric pots we're gonna be using in here. We've got five gallon, and the three gallon so i did it opposite five gallon and three gallon just in case you were wondering okay so depending on what you're going to grow these are great for the tomatoes cucumbers this is good for cucumbers peppers you can do root crops even in them whatever you want there's all kinds of things so um you kind of have an idea what you want to grow yet because that's how we'll set these up and then how many we'll fill up with perlite. Well, definitely, um, definitely tomatoes. Definitely, um, definitely um, would like to have some cucumbers again, so. Okay, now in here, the roots won't clog up your system. Yeah, I, I, Bob was having trouble with his cucumbers too close to the drains and, and the, the roots were actually getting into the drains and he had to kind of had to take them out from where the drains were, so. But this, they'll, they'll stay here. And what's nice about these, they'll air trim the roots you won't ever have balling up in here because they get air through these so that's another reason we're really liking these fabric pots okay so we'll get that set up and fill up the number of bags that we need okay so we're just going to fill up these stay away from the dust yeah, stay away from the dust not good to breathe make sure the wind is going in the right way do not do this in a tornado. In fact, don't do much in a tornado. Okay, you don't have Do not leave Ready? the bag unattended. This can happen to you. Don't do this at home. Okay, four cubic feet. Filled up five five gallon and two three gallon just to kind of give you a gauge on how much perlite to get. 
<laughs> like, okay. I'm going to stand in front of you with that thing. Get away. Go ahead, do it. I have the camera. You have the camera? It's on. Ready, set? Yeah. All right. So then you want to just take and wet these down, rinse them off, and then we'll put them in to the trough. So just let them drain a little bit and we'll take them in. Okay, so we bring these in full of the perlite. We can put them anywhere we want. We can move them around. It gives you lots of options. Um, just simple to use and just versatile way to do this. Okay, this four cubic foot bag filled up three of the five gallon and six of the three gallon. And that's all we're gonna do. We'll rinse these out and put them in. We decide where we're gonna put them all, then we'll put in the tubing and the water, and they'll be ready to plant. Okay, we're not gonna be using the existing plumbing I had in for the float beds in here. Um, just in case we want to switch out again, we want to keep it, uh, you know, all our options open all the time. So we'll be hooking up a, a new little tubing to water from the top on these, using the bed as the drain. The drain will go into the sump and just recirculate this way. But okay, we're going to drill the taller things, tomatoes and things over on this side. Sun angle is over here, so we don't want the shade on things like uh, the green beans, we're going to do bush beans, uh, some bell peppers, hot peppers, uh, probably a cucumber or two in here. So this setup, good to go. Now you can just build it by itself just by making a, a frame and a, and a bottom out of OSB and lining it, setting it on the uh, cinder blocks as you see it's a perfect height for that uh, 27 gallon bin. I'm going to go ahead and cut a short piece of one inch for the one inch drain just to keep everything in place. And you can take a shot underneath there. Next, I'm going to take a half inch hose and I'm going to Go through the handles and we'll attach them to the handles later. But we'll be cutting this, but this way I just get an idea on the length and all the way to the end. And that's all you need, Bill. All right, we're going to start from the end, the other end from where the, the sump tank is. We we'll crimp this off, and that's our end piece. Got to stop the floor somewhere, and then we'll put in our T's as we go down. Okay, we're going to start here, just a cut, and put in the T, scalpel, spreader, okay, T. Dr. R at work. Scalpel. Okay, we've got all the T's put in. Get your length of tubing. So it reaches the bottom here for the pump. And that's that. Okay, we've got 16 buckets. So we'll cut 16 of these. Between five and six inches is great. So we're going to put these tubes in, but I'm not sticking them down into perlite yet. We want to make sure all the water flows right, so just leave them out until after you test them. Looks like a whole herd of baby elephants. Depending on how many buckets you got set up, that'll depend on the size of your pump. We've got 16 buckets, probably a 400 gallon per hour in that range. I'm using a 528 just to be on the safe side um, so and it depends on your configurations 
So just make sure you have water coming out of each little elephant trunk and you're good to go. Okay, put the half inch fitting on this. And tie it again. Bottom of the tank and we'll fill it up and we're ready to run it. Okay, we're just gonna be filling this tub up because you know elephants really like water. Okay, we got water running in all the buckets now. We did have a little with doing 16 buckets with one pump. You gotta restrict those first few a little bit to, to make the last ones start flowing. So the system is running. Water going in here. It drains into the bed, drains down back into the sump. So really there's not much plumbing, just the tubing. You, we don't have to do uh, any grommets in the buckets or anything like that. It's actually just draining through these fabric pots into the trough, out of the trough, through the drain hole, drain hole back into the sump. And then we'll put our nutrient solution right here in the sump. And we're done. So with the solution, the nutrient solution all in, Last thing to do is put the top on. I've cut the slots for the cord and for the tubing. And we set it on and that's it, done. Okay, I like to let it run for a day or so, let the nutrients get in good. Then we can put it on a timer, you know, four or five times a day, just kind of watch when the trough dries up, you know it's time to water. You can water them by hand, you can water them with this pump system. This way it's all automated, you don't have to be around it. So there we go. Back to the elephant analogy, this can be done for peanuts. I had to, I had to do it, I had to say it. And we brought Bob a couple of cuttings from our tomato plants and he's already picking tomatoes after about 30 days. His cucumber plant is going nuts. He's got cucumbers already, his beans are doing great. So, till next time.